Hello and welcome to the Wild Project here with uh, myself, Clinton Charman. Um, thanks for joining me once again. Uh, so just before we get into it, guys, uh, obviously this will be the last time we'll be looking uh, looking at world the world the rugby world cup for the Springboks. So yeah, it's been a been an amazing ride for the for the box. Um, I must admit, I always did believe that we could get to the final and, and win it. Um, so for me, it's been a great, been a great journey thus far, and and, and you know supporting the box is, is not easy at times because uh, we don't always play the most attractive rugby, but um, yeah, we get behind them uh, nonetheless. Just before I get into uh, the review of last week's game, I just want to um, ask you guys to like this video um, and please uh, follow us, the uh, the Fair Digest. Um, here on the YouTube channel as well as the Fair Digest uh, magazine, thefairdigest.com. Um, also, guys, get those comments in. I'd love to hear from you guys. So then, straight into the review now. Um, yeah, we won 19-6 in the semi-final, guys. Well done to you know Sia and the boys. They pulled it out. Um, like the commentator said, I think it was Matthew Proudfoot. No, it wasn't Matthew Proudfoot. He's one of the coaches, I think. Um, anyway, whoever it was. Um, it wasn't pretty, but a win is a win. And like I said in last week's episode, if you if you join me, um, it, I said it was going to be the team that um, the team that executed the best. And you know we stuck to a strict game plan, and, and we executed that game plan uh, for the most part with precision. Um, you know if you look at just looking back at the game. When Wales kicked, they were on the back foot and they kicked because they, they kind of ran out of options at times. Whereas when we kicked, we managed to either get a phase going or just or first phase, so we were still going, um, still going forward, which meant that our kicks uh, had chases that had momentum. Every time Wales kicked, you know, bar one or two, um, the chases lacked a bit of momentum and we come down with the, and we came down with the ball quite easily. Uh, so just getting into some positives from that game. Obviously, as I just said, the game plan and the execution from us was, was brilliant. Um, then just the defence. Well, the defence was just, well, throughout, we are renowned for our defence. You know, if you look at uh, Super Rugby, our, our Super Rugby teams are known for the, the defensive structures. Uh, all the cheaters who are no longer there. Um, but yeah, the defence was almost impenetrable. Um, you know, one, one lapse on defence when, when Faf uh, went in when he wasn't supposed to. Other than that, I don't think Wales would have scored um, a, a try. So, you know, I, th I thought it was the, def the defence was the defining factor of the game. I, th I thought that, you know, every time Wales they tried to get up ahead of steam, we hit them backwards and, and they couldn't deal with that. And, um, yeah, it was, was good to see. Another positive from the game was Andre with a solid, solid boot. Um, if I remember correctly, I don't think he missed a kick. Which, like I've been saying since the pool stages, when he concentrates, he can do that. And, you know, that's what you need for this stage of the tournament. You need to be not nailing those kicks time after time. And he did. And he stepped up the plate again and, and was magnificent. Um, yeah. And then just one other positive. Damien, the midfield monster. Uh, Damien Delendi has, has come on leaps and bounds. If you've read any of my... Um, reviews or, or you know uh, throughout the year you'll know that I'm a big fan of Damien Delende and he's added strings to his bow this um, this season you know both for the, the Springboks and for for the Stormers um, he's had an immense season and he's capping it off perfectly here and I believe he'll he probably is going to cap it off with a World Cup win and he's been one of the, the standout performers for the for the for the Springboks in this uh, World Cup then just one or two negatives that I think we can uh, work on. Uh, too many kicks when we're in favourable positions. You know, those little grubbers when we're approaching the opponent's 22, little kicks in behind, you know, when we had a penalty advantage. I think, you know, our boys are skillful enough to exploit those penalty advantages. And I think, um, especially against England on Saturday, we need to take the, the, the if we get those advantages, we need to take better care of, of that and, and play a bit more because we have the advantage, you know. Um, I see, you, you see um, New Zealand do it quite well when they have a penalty advantage, they really have a go 
and try and make the best of it. So I think that's what I'd like to see a little bit more of, a little bit more creativity and trying to use the, our, our advantages um, a bit smarter. And then just another slight negative, uh, Vili wasn't great again. Um, you know, Vili obviously dropped a couple of high balls, but he, he also caught a couple of high balls. And he's, he's a bit inconsistent lately and uh, it's, um, it's slightly worrying because that is maybe somewhere where England can exploit us. But having said that, he's got enough experience on his shoulders and what he brings to the side besides um, his, his attacking ability or his high ball ability is his experience and his ability to take pressure off Henry Pollard, which I'm about to explain right now. So, you know, everyone's going on about Vili and he's so uh, inconsistent and whatever, but no one has come out and actually um, applauded him for his role in the try. So if you missed it, Vili LaRue, uh, we're about to go right on the try to, to Henry Pollard. Vili LaRue spots that there's a mismatch to his left and he shouts for Faf to pass him the ball to the left. Vili gets the ball to the left, draws two players from Wales, passes to Damien in relative space. Uh, obviously Damien does the rest, beating three or four defenders. But it was Vili's decision to come in at first receiver and say, listen, I'm going to take this ball to the left now. And, and um, Faf respecting that as well and, and showing good um, communication skills there in, 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 in switching the play to the left. And, uh, was an important role because that ultimately, you know, set us up for the win. Now, I know Wales scored um, just after that, but you, but without that try, it could have been a different story, you know. So you know, it, it, as much as you got to call a guy out when he does uh, something wrong, you've also got to praise him when he does some some uh, good stuff. And there is some good stuff coming from Billy uh, that goes unnoticed, and I feel his his criticism is is. Is, uh, is slightly unfair sometimes. Then, yes, just a preview now of, of the final. Obviously, uh, we're behind the box uh, all the way, uh, but Friday, of course. So, um, yeah. So, we have a set game plan. I'm not going to get into it because you guys know the game plan. We're going to kick. We're going to put pressure on the opponent and we're going to try and take points from, from putting pressure on them. Um, so that's our, our basic game plan and as we've, we've heard from, from Rassi and the boys, not much is going to change this week. Obviously with a game plan like that, execution becomes key. Uh, one change for the, for the final is Chesham Colby comes in for Spoon Corsi. Uh, I think that's a good change because as, as great as Spoon is with finishing, his defensive structure let him down at times on, on Saturday and I think um, sometimes he comes a bit too far in where Cheslin seems to uh, know the defensive structure a little bit better. So I think uh, from a defensive point of view, that's going to be huge. Um, then also just looking at, uh, so that's the side for, the, for, for Saturday, obviously the same side just with Cheslin. Um, then just looking at the game itself, I think What's going to come into play here is our ability to sl uh, slow the game down. Uh, I think it's going to be vital. You know, a lot of times um, Wales didn't have a quick ball because we have disruptions there. You know, you've got guys um, guys like Eben and Sia uh, hitting rucks, trying to create havoc there. Then you've got guys like Dwayne and, and uh, also Sia as well, um, as well as uh, Bongi trying to get over the ball, trying to win it back. Uh, Damien Delaney also trying to win it back sometimes. So we slowed the ball down quite effectively. And I thought a few times, um, Jerome Gracias was uh, a bit slow in awarding, uh, uh, what, sure, what I thought would, would be penalties when we were quite clearly over the ball, but he allowed the play to continue and, and he wanted the game to flow. And I respect that, but you know, it, it played into our hands as well, slowing the game down, forcing them to kick off the back foot or forcing the runners to run uh, flat footed as well. Um, then just one thing I want us to do in the game, I want us to kick just a little bit deeper like I did last week. Um, I think if we can restrict England to, to running it from the 22 or trying to kick out, I think our kicking game is, is better than theirs. Um, 
you know, I did some analysis this week watching England and, you know, they, they keep the ball in hand quite well, but you can't really do that when, when you on the back foot pinned in your 22. And I think Henry Pollard and, and fast kicking ability is far better than uh, Owen Farrell and, and Benny Youngs, I think it is. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting tussle there. The, the, the fly off and, and the scrum off combinations are key to both, um, both matchups. Then just on the England side, forcing England to keep. Yes, so they're number six and seven. I think it's Curry and uh, forget the other guy's name now. I think his name. I think it's Sam Worthington. I think I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so they they obviously key at the breakdown, and you know they call them the Kamikaze brothers, and they go in and they steal balls, and uh, the England play a bit different because they've got two fetches in in, in six and seven. Um, whereas we don't really have uh, any traditional fetches, but we've got a lot of guys who, who put up their hand. Like I said, Damien puts up his hand, um, Chesden puts up his hand, uh, Bongi will also get involved, Stephen Kitsoff, uh, Francois Lowe off the bench, um, Dwayne Vermeulen is exceptional at stealing the ball, uh, Sia's also, he's been good, uh, Peter Steff as well. So, you know, guys put up their hands at different times as doctors, we don't just have two guys. So I think if we can nullify that the, that six and seven threat, um, that'll be huge because the way they attack the breakdown break allows Vinopola to be in sort of uh, another backline player, and and uh, we all know Vinopola's running uh, running ability. So if we can nullify them, it nullifies Vinopola quite a bit because then he'll probably have to hit more rucks than he wants to, and if we can do that. Um, I think it'll be to our advantage because uh, Vinopolo does tend to give away penalties at right time. Um, yes. Then lastly on that one, uh, the English. Yes, the English are going to bring lots of physicality to the, to the game. And I don't think the Springboks will mind that one bit. You know, we play every, um, every year we play the Castle Logger... Uh, the, the rugby championship, sorry, um, and the physicality in that competition and also in, in, in Super Rugby is immense and I think our boys are well conditioned, you know, Rassi keeps banging on about being fit and strong and being well conditioned and I think you, you can see evidence of that. I was speaking to someone um, over the weekend, last weekend, saying, you know, if you look at Dwayne now, Fumulan that is, um, Compared to a couple of seasons ago, he was carrying a bit more weight. He, he, he was playing a bit differently as well. You know, we all know Dwayne is a super carrier of the ball, but he's also added a couple of strings to his bow as well. He's, he's slimmed down. He still has that unique running ability and carrying ability and, and offloads to the, to the back line and that sort of thing. But he's added so much more to his game now and um, he's so much fitter than he was before. And, and I think that's just a testament to what the Springboks are trying to do. Uh, you know, all the guys are fit and ready to go. And I think, you know, England can come with a physical challenge. I think we'll meet it. And I think we'll smash them backwards, to be honest. Um, you know, I don't think... The, the, if you look at the game from last week, the, the English um, were able to run over a few, few All Blacks. Um, but I the All Blacks didn't attack the, the defend, their defensive structure the way that the South Africans do. Um, and I think that's going to be the difference on Saturday. Uh, if you look at the way the All Blacks ran with the ball, was pretty much one of ball carriers and then you just when they've got two fetches on the field you're just feeding into the hands really um, and England were very disruptive at breakdown time I don't think it's going to be the same like I said earlier you've got guys that are going to hit the rucks hard uh, Irvin, Peter Steff you know the list goes on for us so I don't see them impacting us as much as we impacting them I think it's going to be a, a, a very close game um, it's going to come down to who executes their game plan the best. I think, obviously, Eddie Jones being the genius he is, he'll have a, an ace up his sleeve, or what he will think will be an ace up his sleeve um, in, in, in the preparation. I think they will, they will try something different. Um, but I don't think it will be too different to what we've seen against when they played against Australia and against New Zealand. I think they're going to combine their, their running with their kicking and, and try and put us under pressure. But... Um, I think we can handle it and I think, you know, I think the boys will, will pull it through. Uh, so my prediction is the Springboks by six 
I'm not going to give a score. I'm just going to say by six. I, I think it's going to be a very tight game, though. Um, but Springboks are going to bring it home once again. Uh, 95, 2007, 2019. Here we go. And then last but not least, uh, just celebrating a little bit of excellence here on the Wild Pro Tier. Um, congratulations to 11 year 11 year old Amashle uh, Zenzile. Uh, yes, this little 11 year old um, has been invited to uh, compete in the African Youth Championships, Chess Championships. Uh, so we have a future chess champion on our hands, the 11 year old Amashle. Well done to you and uh, you know flying the flag of, of South Africa high at such a young age is, is, is brilliant. You know I love to see these. Um, little prodigies come out of South Africa, you know, a while ago uh, in an article I brought you guys uh, the Sim, Ti Sim Tiger as well, the, the young golfing prodigy, so, you know, congrats to to, um, to her and, uh, and hopefully she can bring back, uh, bring back uh, the win for, for South Africa. Um, yeah, guys, so that's me for a Friday. Um, Obviously, get out there, support the the, the Springboks, and uh, hopefully we can we can do it again and bring it home uh, where the cup belongs. Uh, thanks for joining me once again. Uh, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, guys, get the comments in. I'd love to hear from you guys and what you you'd like me to to cover in future. Uh, yeah, guys, uh, enjoy the rugby. Cheers.